Well, the time has finally arrived to be taking a look at yet another 1 6 scale character replica figure from the one and only Big Chief Studios. As in today's Doctor Who product review, I'm going to be taking a look at the 8th Doctor as portrayed by Paul McGann, seen in the 1996 Doctor Who TV movie. This is of course a brand new release that has just came out from Big Chief Studios and is currently available at the time of filming to be ordered from the Big Chief website. If you are a fan of the Big Chief products, I definitely recommend and check out their website as well as my Doctor Who review playlist for all of the Big Chief figures that I've added to my collection to date. And if you are intrigued by this product and wish to see more, I also recommend checking out my unboxing video that went up a week or so ago, giving my first reaction to the product itself. Taking a look at the packaging and presentation box that this 1 6 scale figure comes in, we've seen a little bit of a regeneration in design, featuring of course the brand new 13th Doctor logo and a few other upgrades. However, much like the previous releases, a blue theme has been returned. At the top of the box it states the title of the product itself, as well as giving a rather nice graphic of the TARDIS, with of course a rather Pertwee-esque vortex around it, with of course an image of Paul McGann at the front, and at the bottom we get the 13th Doctor logo, alongside the Big Chief logo, which has been nicely embossed in silver. All the other sides of the box are pretty much the same, with the title of the product once again printed. This time round we have the stacked variation of new series logo, and a really lovely touch is this inclusion of Gallifreyan text along the bottom trim. The base of the box features your usual company information, along with the unique identification number handwritten on. Unlike the previous packaging designs, the top of the box itself acts as a lid to reveal the trays on the inside. One side of this presents all the talented people that have worked on this product. And the opposite side of the box features two lists. One is the specification to list all the things that the 8th Doctor should be wearing, and the second is the accessories that the 8th Doctor should come with. The back of the box is rather colourful and pretty, presenting some Gallifreyan text along with some colourful swells, and at the very bottom we get a little bit of information about the 8th Doctor himself. As per usual, the figure comes in two trays. The first tray is the main tray, containing the figure itself along with the swappable hands and accessories, and the second tray is a much thinner tray, including the plaque for the signature edition, as well as of course the base of the product. Another rather nice new inclusion is this piece of card on the inside of the box. On this side, as you can see, we have a few promotional images of the product itself in a rather classic series-esque Doctor Who vortex with a few Gallifreyan swirls in there, a little bit of the howl sort of reflections of the lens in there as well, looking very nice indeed. The same applies for the opposite side. And then once you flip this round, it does of course reveal a backdrop that isn't of the 8th Doctor's movie TARDIS, which may disappoint some because that has been a consistent theme of some of the previous Doctors, however instead we have a burning effect with once again a few bits of Gallifreyan text there acting as a background if you so wish to use it. Well, here we have the 8th Doctor out of the packaging in all of his Edwardian gentleman glory. Now this figure is absolutely beautiful, I really do love the final result. However, of course, this product has been up for pre-order now for a number of years and it has only just been released. Now in an ideal world, it would be nice to see the production of these figures be made a lot quicker. However, of course, during the production of this figure in particular, Big Chief did face a number of different errors and issues, leading to them in fact changing changing factory, so now they have changed factory, hopefully fingers crossed the production of these figures will in fact be a little bit quicker for their future Doctor Who classic series Doctors. There is two different versions available, the standard edition is limited to 1000 units and there is the signature edition that is limited to 250 units. The figure and the accessories itself in fact remain the same for both releases, however if you were one of the first people to buy this release you do also get the incentive of the Master's Urn and of course naturally if you get the signature edition you do get a signature plaque signed by Paul McGann himself who did of course portray the 8th Doctor and continues to this day to portray the 8th Doctor within the Big Finish audio dramas. Per usual, the figure does of course come with an Anatomics 1-6 scale body, meaning that it has over 30 points of articulation with the tailored costume added over the top. 
Each individual piece of the costume has been tailored individually with different fabrics to best replicate the costume as seen throughout the 1996 TV movie. And all of this is complemented brilliantly by an excellently sculpted head that has also been nicely painted to of course have a wonderful likeness to that of Paul McGann. The hair itself has also been sculpted as opposed to being that natural horse hairstyle seen on Barbie dolls and the early Big Chief Amy Pond figure, thankfully because that likeness wasn't the best to say the least. In order to achieve the best looks for photography and filming with these figures, you do of course need to spend time to get the costume to look right and sit right on the body itself. This can often be quite time consuming, however something that is completely unavoidable where you have a full on tailored miniature costume. Normally I do in fact use a rather small hair clip because this means you can especially tuck in areas of the scarf and the cravat as well as pull out the collar sections of the shirt to make them look right on the body. So be patient, take some time. Throughout this review, of course, it may look a little bit unusual at points because I'm physically moving about the product and reviewing it. it will, of course, have a few unusual angles where the clothing may not sit completely right on the body itself. So starting off with the key component of the costume, it is, of course, the green frock coat. Now, this has been rather accurately tailored to what is seen within the movie itself. Of course, it is a rather nice green and generally sits on the body quite well. It's rather similar to that of the Series 7B 11th Doctor figure and is just ever so slightly longer. On either side of the frock coat there is the inclusion of three buttons which have been added in a diagonal fashion, all of which have this rather unusual almost floral design sculpted into them. Around the midpoint of the jacket, there is also the inclusion of a number of stitching lines, which make the jacket generally sit on the body a lot tighter, and this also continues around the back of the jacket as well, including a few stitching lines running up the spine, as well as a few tuck sections on the sides. As with a lot of the Doctor coats, this does also divide at the very bottom to reveal a little bit of the lining underneath. One of my personal favourite parts of the frock coat is the lapel sections which have had a little bit of velvet material added over the top in an emerald green colour. These are generally a really nice texture and represent what is seen within the TV movie quite well, however as with a lot of the big chief lapels on the previous Doctor figures, these do stick out quite a lot. It's one of the parts of the coat that does need a little bit of adjustment when on display in order to get them to look right, as most of the time they do flap out quite a lot and generally look a little bit oversized, but once they are displayed correctly and pressed back, they do complete the look really nicely. The cuffs of the jacket also follow a similar design, including the velvety material once again, along with a series of buttons around the cuffs. Although for the most part hidden, the inside of the frock coat does also feature a rather lovely looking cream velvet lining, rather similar material to that of the lapels. Once again, this has been very smartly tailored and finishes off the coat nicely, especially if you pose the figure in a dynamic position. In order to take a look at the rest of the costume, I'm going to remove the frock coat. In order to do this, all you need to do is pull the arms back as so, and then slide the jacket itself off the body. This is rather easy to do, unlike some of the other figures where the costume seems to be a bit more tighter on the body. And it Removing the coat provides a whole new alternative look for the 8th Doctor, meaning that you can replicate some of the promotional images for the movie, as well as a number of the different scenes. I think that he looks absolutely brilliant, really showing off the waistcoat and its many intricate details. Taking a closer look at the waistcoat itself, this has a rather nice repeating pattern on, using a series of different shades of grey. The sides of the waistcoat and the lapels have been brought out by a series of silver tubes that nicely and smartly finishes off the waistcoat. The back of the waistcoat has a rather similar material to the inner lining of the coat, being a cream velvet, including some stitching down the spine as well as the inclusion of a belt buckle on the lower back, which also includes a little metal buckle as well as a little bit of material looped around this to create the impression of a belt. A brilliant attention to detail, even though this is on the back of the waistcoat and can only be seen if you remove the coat. The front of the waistcoat features a series of small intricate plastic buttons. These are all painted black and sadly I am in fact missing one around the mid half which hopefully, fingers crossed, will be replaced soon. 
as well as a few further stitching lines on the lower half of the waistcoat there is also the inclusion of pockets on either side which are functional and you can make it look like the 8th Doctor is pulling something out of them. The waistcoat itself much like all the other items of clothing are removable and are fixed in place by some small buttons underneath the waistcoat itself which I'm glad they have replaced the velcro as seen on a few previous releases. And on the opposite side there is the inclusion of the fob watch chain. More on the actual fob watch later when I take a look at the accessories and this is really the only way to replicate the chain dangling as seen within the movie itself as sadly having the chain connected to one of the buttons up here isn't in fact possible although the promotional images of the product do show that it is. Only real way to do this is tucking the chain in between the divide of the waistcoat. The figure does also feature a white high collar wingtip shirt which is pretty similar to all of the other Doctors really just with the absence of the wingtips at the very top. As per usual your usual detailing is featured on this so you have some rather intricate stitching around the cuffs of the shirt itself and the buttons running up the very middle. Although you can't see this the buttons this time round are in fact silver studded very similar to the little button featured in the middle of the cravat. The detailing on the wingtips is also quite nice although simply Due to the size of this figure as you can see they can sometimes look a little bit messy and they are quite hard to actually pose in a natural way and finally for this part of the costume we have the inclusion of the silver cravat now i would be lying if i said this was easy to pose it is an absolute pain in the arse and that is expected once again for the one sixth scale because it is incredibly hard to tie knots at this size. I've tried my best, I've literally probably put too much time into getting this to look right. Sometimes, especially when it first arrives, it can look rather puffy and silly. However, the way that I've managed to do it is tucking it underneath the waistcoat and actually into the white shirt itself between the buttons to try and keep it in place. Naturally, this is a rather lovely looking silver colour, very similar to that of the piping on the waistcoat, and rather nicely we do have the inclusion there of a little silver stud. The rest of the cravat itself does of course tie around the neck of the figure which I think is actually the main flaw of this cravat piece. Simply these sections that run around the side almost look a little bit too big and it's probably best actually folding these in half to make it look a little bit thinner especially around this side it does look a little bit too wide. However from a front perspective it does look okay and you certainly get the impression of what it is meant to be and overall looks alright I suppose. It's just very fiddly. Placing the overcoat back onto the figure, a reoccurring theme with lots of 1-6 scale collectibles is that when you have an overcoat such as this, made of a rather thick material that is also quite a nice texture, it does look rather bulky and the costume underneath can be incredibly well fitted, however the frock coat can make it look almost a bit too padded and thick. Once again this is a case of displaying the costume and sort of pulling it here and there to make it look right when taking photos. And finally for the material costume itself, moving down to the very bottom, we have the inclusion of the trousers. Now I've been trying to figure out a way to describe these without being a little bit insulting. They look a bit like dad trousers, I'm not going to lie. Of course the 11th Doctor and 12th Doctor had rather smart looking black trousers, but I think it's just the colour of these. They look a bit unusual. I mean they fit the costume rather well, I couldn't imagine the 8th Doctor wearing black trousers especially within this costume. I think that the actual colour does look rather accurate to what is seen within the TV movie. From what I can remember, the character options action figure was a rather sort of grey. This is a more brown colour. We have a seam of course running up the side rather neatly, as with most Big Chief trousers. And then of course we also have the inclusion of the flies there at the very top, which have been connected together using a piece of Velcro, which considering it is Velcro, it is rather neat. Once more, the pockets on either side are indeed functional, so you can put a series of different accessories in these, or maybe even, if you wish, pose the Eighth Doctor with his hands in his pockets. On the back of the trousers there is a series of a few further stitches and the only other thing worth pointing out is the inclusion of a pocket which I do believe is another one that works however I haven't in fact tried and to be honest there's nothing really worth putting in it however it is still nice to see it included. 
Due to these being made of material, we do have a nice series of natural creases running down to the very bottom to make them look like actual trousers. However, sadly, due to the material that they are made from, there does seem to be a few unwanted sort of creases towards the top here especially, which makes them look more dollish, I suppose, as opposed to real-life trousers. And to end off the figure, of course, we have the shoes. Now, these did in fact change in sculpt from the original prototype, as they did directly just reuse the 11th Doctor Series 7B shoes, well, boots, I suppose, and then I do believe painted them a different colour. Thankfully, these were changed to a more accurate counterpart, so we do have a few nice designs on this. However, for the most part, they are pretty much just a glossy black, so we have, of course, the different sections there towards the top, as well as the sole on the very bottom. And as a finishing touch, the boots do also come complete with some treads sculpted into the base. So in conclusion for the 8th Doctor's outfit, overall I am really impressed by it and I think that all the different components come together incredibly well to make a nicely tailored costume. Overall the definite highlights for me are the waistcoat, I love the patterning on this, especially the buttons and the silver piping going up the very middle. The cravat is also a nice piece as well as the emerald green highlights on the lapels and the cuffs of the jacket. However, naturally overall there are still a few parts I would have liked to see maybe tightened up a little bit, including the winged collar sections on the shirt underneath. Perhaps the frock coat could also be a little bit tighter as well, just to make it a bit more streamlined to the body and not as baggy in parts. However, as per usual with these figures, a little bit of tugging and repositioning does make the costume overall look a little bit better in certain angles, but generally I'm really happy with it. Moving up now to the head sculpt and the likeness to Paul McGann. This is the part of the review where it gets a little bit controversial because naturally with all Big Chief Studios figures, there is quite a big argument. Does it look like this person? Doesn't it look like this person? Who knows? However, once again, there is a big difference between looking at a figure from a picture and actually having it in hand. And personally, I must admit, I was a little bit concerned about this figure. There was a few early promotional images for this product that did concern me because there was something about it which didn't look right. The dimensions looked a little bit off, and I would dare say, in fact, the main front of the box for this figure actually shows the exact image that I'm on about. There was something about the proportions on that figure that just didn't look right. However, now having the product in hand and now seeing the revised paint taps that have been done from the initial prototype, I must admit, I am fairly happy with it. I think that it definitely looks like Paul McGann. One of those angles where it does normally look a little bit off is face on. However, I'm now facing the camera directly into the figure's face, and I must admit, I think it looks pretty impressive. It, the proportions generally look pretty decent, and when you start to tilt the figure onto the side profile, I think that it looks even better. Once again, we have a really lovely blend in the different series of skin tones that have been used around the head itself. Overall, the skin tone does seem to be a rather tanned design, so as you can see at the very top here, we do have a few darker pigments. Then as we come around the cheek area, there is a few lighter red, almost pinkish pigments that have been used. And then we have the inclusion of the stubble, which is just below the chin. Now, once again, this was something that concerned me on the initial prototype, because it did almost look like he had a beard. And I must admit, it is currently under studio lights right now, and it does look rather prominent, and the beard does look incredibly obvious. However, I think that the darker tones that have been used on this do make it look rather natural, perhaps a little bit too exaggerated compared to what was seen within the movie. However, I don't mind too much. Once again, it doesn't detract overall from my overall opinion of the likeness. The lips have been very nicely painted. We have a light pink skin tone that has been applied on these and we do also have a few darker skin tones that have been applied just underneath the nose as well as around the crease sections between the nose and the mouth as well as of course this slightly darker skin tone underneath the chin as well to create the impression of shading. Moving further up to the eyes now once again these are absolutely brilliant I do love the way that Big Chief do eyes we have this rather natural looking impression so we have this glossy effect that has been applied over the top of the paint application to give it a damp wet natural look which 
which is incredibly impressive. And there is also a few lighter pink pin taps that have been used around the sides of the eyes to give the impression of once again that skin tone. Naturally we have the iris and the people in the very middle and then we do also have the paint application of the eyebrows in there as well which are not too overdone and are pretty impressive and we do also have a few subtle darker tones around the top half of the face as well especially underneath the eyes and just above the forehead here to give a nice impression of a few wrinkles however not too much because naturally he looked fairly young in the movie to be honest. And then of course tilting the fig around to take a look at that rather brilliant wig that Paul McGann did wear within the movie. Once again this is pretty impressive and I absolutely love the detailing on this. These very small and detailed curls around the side of the face making the divide between the head and the hair very unclear which is great. Some of the other figures have a bit of a sharper divide between the head and the hair itself. This does look rather natural. There has been a few lighter brown washes that have been applied over this as well to bring out some of those details in the curls even further which I'm incredibly impressed with. It does apply for the back there as well. Lots of different curls nicely brought out by a dark wash. A few people have said that perhaps the hair is a little bit too dark which there is a little bit of a controversial argument as to is Paul McGann's hair black in the movie? Is it light brown? Because we've had so far classic series action figures that seem to represent both of them. However I think this looks pretty decent. I like the colour shade that they've gone for and once again actually that, that is a perfect shot to show that side profile file definitely looks like Paul McGann and to be quite honest considering that they've pulled this off incredibly well I'll be very interested to see what they would do with a Dark Eyes Knight of the Doctor older version of Paul McGann especially considering that they seem to do older people's faces a little bit better than younger however I think that this is possibly one of the best younger faces that Big Chief have done to date and once again I can't wait to see what they pull out of the bag with the upcoming classic series Doctors within the next few months. Briefly taking a look at the many points of articulation, the head is on a ball joint, meaning that it can move up and down, as well as of course 360, and the neck joint itself is also on a little bit of a pivot, meaning that it can move forward and back. At the arms, they can of course move forward as well as out to the sides, bend at the elbow to 90, and then of course there is also the pivot ball joint at the wrists as well, meaning that it can move up and down and on an angle. At the waist there is of course also the joint which means that he can move back and forward as well as to the sides. At the leg it can also move out to 90 as well as bend at the knee and there is also the pivot joint at the ankle as well. As always, the many points of articulation really do aid this figure when on display. However, something that I instantly noticed when taking this figure out of the box is that the points of articulation itself are a lot stiffer compared to the previous incarnations of the Doctor, which I am incredibly pleased with. It does mean that when you move some of the, say, the arms or the legs, it can squeak, as you've no doubt seen throughout this review. However, it is much better to have stiffer joints on figures that are in fact quite a struggle to move compared to arms that physically do not stay in place when you want to pause it in a certain position. My, I do believe, 10th Doctor and 12th Doctor do suffer from that quite a lot and do kind of need tightening up, so I'm happy to see that Big Chief have done this. I really hope that, that does also continue on their future releases. As with all Big Chief collector figures, this figure does of course come packaged with a nice range and selection of accessories, all of which are from the 1996 TV movie. Some can be displayed within the figure's hand, and the others can be placed onto the actual costume itself. First up we have the 8th Doctor's trusty sonic screwdriver. Now from what I understand this is exactly the same sculpt to the sonic that came with the 4th Doctor release. We do have all the standard details that you would come to expect including the different collar sections coming up to the top where we do of course have the round emitter along with of course the bulletproof piece which has of course been painted in a red paint app and we do also have the inclusion of the golden band there at the very bottom. As with all Doctor figures, this figure does come packaged with a hand specifically sculpted to hold the sonic screwdriver, making for some nice pose options. Next up, and carrying on that fourth Doctor theme, we have a paper bag of Jelly Babies. This time round, the paper bag has been painted a tanned brown colour, with a few creases and wrinkles within that sculpt, and then we do also have, of course, the inclusion of a few Jelly Babies on the inside that have been painted red, yellow and green. 
also packaged to display with the 8th Doctor. We do have a yo-yo which has been painted in a bronze colour and we do almost have a geometric design there printed along the front in a black. The inclusion of the string does of course provide the illusion that the yo-yo can actually work, however it doesn't, it's only for display purposes because Big Chief are figure creators, not wizards. If you are a clumsy collector and you lose things quite easily, this is an accessory that should remain within the box. We have the Beryllion chip. Now this thing is absolutely tiny. Here's a comparison with the Sonic screwdriver. It does have a clear plastic added over the top there, along with a little bit of circuitry on the inside, which has been given a black and bronze highlight. And we do also have the black base there as well. It's a nice piece, however, it's possibly one of the smallest accessories that I've ever seen released with a Doctor Who product. And and the camera can hardly focus on it. Luckily, however, if you want to see your Beryllium chip a little bit larger, we do of course have a magnifying glass. Now, as you could just see there, it does in fact kind of work, which is quite a cool touch. This is a rather intricately sculpted piece. We do have a brown handle there, and the rest of the rim of the magnifying glass itself has been painted a goldy bronze colour. A cool inclusion, and once again, something that is nice to pose within the Eighth Doctor's hand. Just in case this Time Lord loses track of time, we also have the inclusion of, of course, a miniature fob watch, with the nice addition of even a metal chain here, which can be connected to the Eighth Doctor's waistcoat. The actual clock face of the fob watch itself is just a printed on piece, however, there is a raised piece of plastic over this to make it look like the rounded dome that you would see on a fob watch clock face. The rest of the watch itself has, of course, just been painted in a standard silver paint app, with, of course, the buckle there at the top. As covered earlier, the fob watch can of course sit within the waistcoat pocket, however you can also do of course the iconic 8th Doctor pose from one of the promotional images for the movie where he is showing off his fob watch because for some reason he's incredibly proud of it. I think that's why he's doing it, I don't quite know. This makes for a great display option and I'm glad to see that this uniquely sculpted hand has been included. Another small accessory now that also comes on a miniature chain, we have the rather traditional variation of TARDIS Keen for this incarnation of the Doctor. Some rather nice detailing on this once again, we have the small patterns and triangular sections that you would come to expect on a classic series TARDIS Keen, and it is of course much more exciting compared to the year lock that we would see within the new series of Doctor Who. At the minute of course Big Chief Studios have only done a 10th and 11th Doctor TARDIS, it would be nice to see them tackle a classic series box at some point, and maybe then the 8th Doctor can have somewhere to place the TARDIS key. The biggest accessory by far to come of the 8th Doctor is the magnetic clamp, which has a series of nice details, including this almost retro phone looking dial there at the very top, which has been painted a golden colour, and we do also have a few ridges towards the very side, as well as a circular section towards the bottom. The vast majority of this has of course been painted a silver, with a few black highlights here and there, and almost a wash added over the top to make it look ever so slightly grubby or weathered, and the same does also apply to the back of as well, where we have a few nodules and sort of rivet sections on the back of this control panel, and nothing really too much to talk about at the very bottom. This has once again been made of a rather high quality and sharply designed piece of plastic. Finally, of course, at the request of the Master in his last will and testament, he did of course see the Eighth Doctor transport his last remains back to his home planet of Gallifrey, which if you've seen the movie, you know exactly how well that went. So the final accessory is in fact an incentive, I do believe, to the first 400 or so people who ordered the Eighth Doctor, and it is the Master's Urn. Now this is a very small accessory, however it is nice that it has been included, it is a rather spherical piece which had been painted in a almost bronze colour once more. We have a few rivets and things around the very side looking almost a little bit steampunk and we do have this little sort of button piece there at the very top or a lid whatever you want to call it with a little nodule there and we do also have a rather flat base piece making it very easy to display alongside the Doctor without it rolling about. Hands! Paul McGann has eight of them, not in real life. 
that would be silly. So as per usual, this Big Chief figure does of course come with a series of different interchangeable hands, all of which have been posed in several different positions in order to hold the accessories that this figure does of course come with. And as per usual, we do have four sets for each side of hand, and these have been detailed incredibly well. They certainly look like human hands, and they've been given that rather flexible nature that all Big Chief figures do tend to have in order to pose the accessories within the hand with ease, so it shows that the fingers don't snap, and it just makes everything a bit easier, really. And then we do also have a few paint application pieces on this. As you can see on this one, we have a little bit of bone structure, and then on a number of the others, we have a few pigments in there as well on the skin to bring out a few of those details. Even there in the light, you can see a few of the veins reflecting on the top of McGann's hand there. And then we do also have some detailing on the inside of the palm of the hand as well, as you can see some more than others, so we have a few wrinkles and things in there. Placing the 8th Doctor into his best Wurzel Gummidge impression, taking a look at how to swap over the hands, we have this little stump here at the very end, which you do get, I do believe, three spares of in case they snap. In the history of me collecting these figures, they never have snapped as of yet, so it is nice to see that they've still included a few just in case that does occur. This does simply just pop onto the socket, as you can see, you can choose of course what hands to place on, depending on what floats you bought at the time, and this does of course mean that it is an articulated joint, so it does move from side to side. However, something to note, and something that I've noticed with this figure in particular, is that once you come to take the hands off, as you can see, the socket does sometimes come with it, so just pop that out of the piece, as you can see there, and then plonk it back in, that it's ready for the next hand to go on. When ordering the 8th Doctor, I did of course opt for the signature edition as per usual, because it comes with this rather gorgeous looking plaque, which looks great alongside the figure when on display in the cabinet. Now this is of course the signature version, therefore it does of course have Paul McGann's signature, who did of course portray the 8th Doctor. Now this is limited edition to 250 units, and mine is unit 243. This is in exactly the same style to all of the previous signature edition releases, and it does also feature the classic series Doctor Who logo on the front, as well as of course the title of the product there along the top as well, which is a nice touch. And if you do have the opportunity to get this version, I definitely recommend it, because due to this one being limited to 250, as opposed to a run of 1000, it is naturally a piece that is much more appealing to the collectors. Due to this product being a more premium and higher end piece of merchandise, we do also have the inclusion of a certificate of authenticity. The front of this does pretty much replicate the front of the box, so we have the 8th Doctor's face within a rather Pertwee-esque time vortex, as well as the Big Chief logo and the Doctor Who stacked variation of logo being embossed with a rather lovely silver style. In the back of this, we do also have a few further images of the product itself, including a recreation of the promotional image of the 8th Doctor, along with a few details certifying that this is a officially licensed Doctor Who product, and once again stating the number being 243, which has been handwritten on, which is really nice, and something of which I do believe is new for these products, and hasn't been included on the previous releases, so I really hope that this continues on the future incarnations of the Doctor within the Doctor Who 1 6th scale series. In order to be consistent with the previous Doctor Who releases from Big Chief, we have the inclusion of the support base. Now this is exactly the same to all of the other bases that have came with the Doctor Who figures, and considering that Big Chief has upgraded and regenerated, I suppose, many times over the years, I think that if it wasn't for the nature of consistency, we most likely would have seen an upgraded base by this point to be a bit more stylish, or maybe even have more lights at the bottom, such as the Thunderbirds releases, because they've certainly improved in their bases on the other lines at Big Chief Doom. However, for now we are of course stuck with this standard base with of course a blue plastic finish, which is okay, I don't mind it, however it's not necessarily as cool as some of the other bases that Big Chief Doom. Naturally we do have the metal tripod piece at the top there, which does fit where the crotch is, which I wouldn't want to be the 8th Doctor figure, let's just say that, it does look a little bit uncomfortable. As per usual, this does of course extend in order to correlate with of course the height of the figure itself, and of course we do have the base there at the bottom, which is your usual reflective design. As always, the base does of course illuminate to feature the number 8 in Gallifreyan, or at least I do believe it says number 8 in Gallifreyan, I wouldn't know, because I don't speak Gallifreyan, and they don't do uni degrees in it, I've checked, trust me. 
The base itself does support the figure nicely and is a good opportunity to display the figure in some more dynamic poses such as running or maybe even considering that this is the 8th Doctor showing off that his shoes do of course fit perfectly. And with that, that concludes another Doctor Who Big Chief Studios 1-6 scale limited edition character replica figure review, this time around of the 8th Doctor from the 1996 TV movie, Signature Edition, limited to 250 units. A lovely product, I really do love it, it's so nice to have another classic series incarnation of the Doctor to add to the collection alongside the first Doctor after missing out on the original fourth Doctor, very annoyingly I hate the fact I missed out on that one, but I'm thankful that there is of course a season 18 one coming hopefully in the next year or so. Overall this figure is lovely, it was definitely worth the wait, and it is clear that Big Chief are developing. I'm putting that probably down to the other lines that Big Chief do do at the same time, such as the James Bond series, as well as the Thunderbirds. They know what to do to make products look better, and generally the tailoring seems to be getting a lot more precise and strict, and everything seems to fit the body a little bit better than the previous older figures from the series. As for the likeness, it's brilliant, arguably one of the best that Big Chief have pulled off so far. Of course, some people may have differing opinions, but personally to me, I think it is really good, and I can't wait, as I said, to put it alongside the other classic series Doctors. As for the accessories, they are also a nice inclusion, considering that the 8th Doctor only had one televised story. It's nice to see a good range of accessories, along with your standard swappable hands, and generally, if you are a fan of the 8th Doctor, then this product, if you're a collector of merchandise as well of course, this product is definitely for you because it is pretty much the definitive, the best ever version of Paul McGann that you could possibly get in merchandise form. It doesn't get really any better than a product such as this. Really lovely, high quality, a premium product, lovely box, great design, and I recommend buying it. If they do still have the signature editions in stock, I recommend buying that, of course, because naturally it will be rarer in the future. However, if the standard edition is the only one left, I recommend buying that one really anyway, because at the end of the day, the figure is exactly the same, and therefore it's equally just as nice. And that's fair it, if you want Paul McGann's signature, then just go to a convention and meet him, because he is lovely in real life. Some people may be wondering why there wasn't a comparison in this review to the other Big Chiefs in my collection. That is because I'm at university and I'm filming at university at the minute in my student accommodation. Therefore, I can't film with my other Big Chief figures. However, do follow me on social media and no doubt I will upload a photo of all of them together eventually at some point when this figure eventually makes the journey home to be at Hosty HQ. So thank you very much for watching this review, I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this product, please do feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I will try my best to answer them at some point in the near future. And do stay tuned on Horse Productions for brand new Doctor Who content and reviews of merchandise, books, audio dramas and many other things every single week. So thanks once again for watching, I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.